So good morning, everyone, and thank you for taking the time to attend this webinar. I'm Zuleika Pevic, the Clean Energy Program Manager at CLEAR and the Colorado Clean Diesel Program Manager. We're really excited to introduce you to the Colorado Clean Diesel Program, which I'll refer to as CCDP, and three innovative manufacturers of electric lawnmowers, leading the way in reducing diesel emissions, noise, operating costs, fuel costs, and of course, happier and healthier lawn care. So I'll start the webinar off today with an introduction to the Colorado Clean Diesel Program. And then we'll hear from Mean Green Mowers, Gravely, and Scythe Robotics, a Colorado-based company. And we'll try to leave plenty of time at the end for questions. So feel free to leave your questions in the Q&A box um, and we'll get to them at the end. And we also have folks from Siebert, a Gravely client currently using their electric mowers in their landscaping operations on the call. And they'll be available to answer questions and speak to their experiences of using the technology. So let's get going. Next slide, Zach. Um, and actually, next slide. So the Colorado Clean Diesel Program is the state offering of the EPA's Federal Diesel Emissions Reduction Act funding. The EPA provides grants on a federal level, and if states want to participate, they are allocated funds to run their own programs. The purpose of the program is to provide funds and rebates that protect human health and improve air quality by reducing harmful emissions from diesel engines. So CLEAR has contracted with the CDPHE, Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment, to run the program in the state of Colorado. And besides the state allocated DARA funds, the CCDP also has funding from Colorado's VW diesel emission settlement added to the pot. So this portion of the funding must go to zero emission solutions. So we're very, very excited that there are options available now. And so we are clear from the get-go, the CCDP only funds off-road ve off vehicles and machinery. We can't fund fleet EVs such as cars and trucks. But up until now, DARA funding across the US really has largely been used for upgrading older diesel engines with newer ones, which is important, but not really the true purpose of this funding. So in our contract with the CDPHE, we are mandated to find and fund project, projects that are utilizing hybrid or zero emissions technologies. So these can be through the purchase of new cutting edge machines or by replacing a diesel engine with a zero emissions power source. And as these technologies are becoming more common and available, there are more and more options for interested folks. So please keep in mind throughout the, this presentation that the CCDP did not develop and does not have the ability to change the guidelines of the program. They are national guidelines developed by the EPA. And I'll tell you right off the bat that the funding does come with some strict guidelines, including the requir requirement that a similar diesel machine gets scrapped. Next slide. This looks just a little bit at um, the funding availability and an example project. So in a zero emissions upgrade, the maximum grant funding available is 45% of the total project cost. And the total project cost can include all of the electrical infrastructure that's needed to charge the electric machine um, and operator and mechanic training. If your operators or mechanics don't have this, the expertise to deal with these machines, you can include their training in the total project costs. And what we hope is that the grant award covers the incremental cost between a zero emissions machine and a new diesel machine. So customers are paying a premium for these new technologies, but the savings in fuel and maintenance over time also help to make up some of the upfront costs. Next slide, please. And there's important eligibility requirements, um, specifically that the machine being replaced and the new machine are registered in Colorado and that the equipment being replaced is owned, not leased by the applicant. So I don't know that lawnmowers have any registration needs. Um, so it's really up to um, the organization applying for the grant to attest that um, the equipment is, the equipment that's being scrapped has worked in Colorado and the equipment that's being, it's being replaced. Um, is working is going to be working in Colorado. Next slide. Okay, so this is the hard sell. <laughs> Do the purpose of the funding being um, to reduce diesel emissions, a like-for-like -like machine needs to be completely destroyed to be eligible. 
and it needs to be, be a machine in good working order that has been used regularly in the past two years, plus it has to have at least three years of remaining life. So it's my understanding that for some organizations, their mowers are unlikely to work 500 hours in a year. Now the EPA offers waivers for grant requirements if the project otherwise meets their programmatic priorities. Uh, so don't despair. If your machine isn't working as much as 500 hours a year, we, we, there is a workaround for that. Um, also, if you happen to have extra machines that you're willing to get rid of, you can combine um, the operating hours of multiple units if you're willing to scrap both. If you have two machines that are both working about 250 hours a year and um, you're willing to scrap both of them to get one new electric one, you can do that. Next slide. Oh, actually, sorry, go back one. Sorry. Um, the other thing is that the remaining life is the fleet owner's estimate of the number of years until the unit would have been retired from service if the unit were not being upgraded or scrapped because of the grant funding. And that is more on the honor, honor system. Okay, next slide. So the scrappage requirement is pretty particular and it is definitely not on the honor system. So the engine block has to have a three inch hole cut into it and both chassis rails have to be cut in half. Since this is a key requirement, it is very important that it is done correctly and evidenced appropriately. You don't wanna scrap a piece of equipment, get it hauled off to the recycler and then end up without the proper evidence. Next slide. So the Colorado Clean Diesel Program accepts applications on a rolling basis. So you can submit your, submit your application at any time. And this slide just gives a general idea of how the timeline could work. So if you were to apply, it's a little bit late in October now, but if you were to apply today or tomorrow um, and um, you know, we would review the application and um, get you a grant agreement by probably December. And then once you've received all the new equipment and you've scrapped the old equipment, um, then we can issue funds by about February. So it's not an immediate um, uh, process, but um, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not too long either. So, um, if you're interested in the program and applying, I would just strongly recommend that you reach out to me directly to make sure that the program aligns with your organization's procurement timelines. We wanna make sure that you'll get the funding when you need it and as you're, as you're purchasing. But it is a reimbursement grant. So um, we can't, we're not gonna give you the funds outright in order to purchase the equipment, but we will reimburse you um, uh, once, once you have the equipment and you scrap the old equipment. Next slide. Um, and to be totally honest, it's been really hard to find projects to fund. People are, of course, very hesitant to scrap a machine they know for one that doesn't have decades of proven technology behind it. But we know that there are entities out there who want to be on the forefront of electric adoption. And we want them to have the benefit of this funding to help them be leaders. So the good news is that this means we are pretty flush with funds and um, applicants are all but guaranteed to receive the maximum allowable funding. Um, and we do have cri evaluation criteria that as the grants become more competitive, will help with determining who gets the funding. So we wanna reduce emissions as much as possible. So the higher the emissions reduction per dollar of grant funds, the better. We want people to push the envelope in Colorado. So if someone is willing to be one of the first to adopt a new technology, we will reward that innovation and leadership. And we want the most people to benefit from the reduced emissions. So our priority area is the ozone non-attainment area, primarily on the front range. But anyone in the state of Colorado is eligible and we highly encourage everyone to apply. Next slide. And we've tried to make the application process as painless as possible. So you can find the application on the website, cocleandiesel.org and press the apply for a grant tab at the top of the page. And next slide. And then please review the program guide or get in touch with us directly before you start filling out the project worksheet. The guide details the eligible equipment for replacement and the requirements of the grant funding. And we've been adding a lot of new technologies to the program guide. Um, so it's always worth, if, you, if you're looking at the program guide and you're not seeing the project that you would like um, funds for, get in touch with us because it's possible that we can fund it even if it's not in the program guide. 
Then when you have the details of the equipment you wanna purchase and the equipment being scrapped, you can fill out the project work, worksheet. And then finally, you can fill out the application form online. Next slide. So that's all from me. Um, thank you for your attention. And I'm happy to answer questions about CCDP in the question and answer portion after the presentations from the manufacturers. So now I'd like to introduce Tyler Warmus from Mean Green Mowers. Thanks, Sulika. Um, yeah, so Mean Green, we're very excited to hear about these grants. We've actually been participating in some uh, programs out in California, very similar, uh, where you do have to unfortunately, uh, you know, recycle a gas mower to get an electric mower, uh, but it's worked out very well. Actually, in September, we went through about $300,000 in funds alone just in one month. So it's been very, very good. So we're excited to see what we're able to do in Colorado as far as the manufacturing standpoint goes with Mean Green. Uh, next slide. Uh, so a little bit about Mean Green Mowers, who we are and, and what we do. Uh, we've been building commercial electric mowers for over 10 years. Um, so, you know, we, we haven't, you know, just started up and, you know, um, started selling something. We have been doing it for a while. Um, and, you know, a lot of, not a lot of people realize that. Not a lot of people realize that we've actually been, you know, making these mowers since 2010, 2011. Um, so I just wanted to really put that out there so people understand that we have been doing this um, for quite a while. Uh, we use lightweight aerospace, aluminum, and steel construction for the highest strength and efficiency. So what we do is we try to make our mowers as light as possible while still making them as strong as possible. And the reason for this is with an electric mower, your efficiency is everything. So the lighter we can be, the longer runtime we will have. Um, and we're seeing on average that we're about 150 to 200 pounds lighter than a, a typical, um, than our competition basically with the same size battery capacity. Um, so because of what we do and how we uh, use aluminum structures along with our steel structures, we can be just as, as strong, but more efficient and a lot lighter. Uh, we are USA engineered and built. Uh, we do have some patent technology in our mowers. Um, within that, it includes commercial cooling systems, um, so these, these cooling systems keeps the electronics and motors cool for continuous all day operations. Uh, we have load sensing blade motors. So as you're mowing along, if you're down in like a ditch, say on the left side of your mower, uh, the left blade controller is gonna send more power to the left blade motor to keep that tip speed at that consistent 18,000 plus feet per minute. Um, so we can send the power to the specific blades when the blades need it. Um, so we're not just always you know, overpowering the blades. We do have selectable two speed modes for the wheel and blades also. So, you know, if you're in the summer, summer months and you're just kind of sprucing up the grass, you can kick it down into a low blade speed mode instead of a high blade speed mode, where you'd probably use the high blade speed mode, mode more in your spring or maybe fall uh, conditions. Along with our wheel, uh, we also have two wheel speed modes. Um, and depending on our mowers, you're like eight to nine miles an hour in your low speed. And then your high speed, you'd be more like 11 and a half to 13 miles per hour, depending on the model. So your high speed is going to be more for that transport. Um, so these universities, park districts who need to go from one area to another, they're going to really be using that high speed mode for that transport. Um, we have blade motor safety stoppage. So if you're mowing along and you do strike something, it is going to shut the motor down immediately to prevent any kind of damage to the motor or blade itself. Um, with this, what you would do is you would back off whatever you had hit, you know, make sure the deck is clear, and then you'd actually be able to, to recycle the PTO and you could turn your blades right back on. Um, and then we also have dampening controls for best steering response. So we've, we've worked a lot on our steering to make it feel as close as we can to a hydraulic mower. Um, it's still a little different because it is driven by wire, but we've worked really hard to make the drivability of the mowers um, very comparable um, to what people are used to. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so there are five important factors that we recommend to consider when purchasing an electric mower. Um, the five factors are gonna be the power, the battery capacity, which is your runtime, the efficiency, the value and the safety standards. 
Uh, next slide, please. So with Power, I just want to and kind of educate everyone, um, anyone that doesn't know, that if you go out and you see, say, a 48-volt mower on a showroom floor, and then you see an 82-volt mower, just because that mower has 82 volts, it's not necessarily more power. Um, a lot of people don't realize that. Um, so today I want to educate you that power is really only half the power equation. Uh, voltage is only half the power equation. Sorry about that. So to get your power, you would do your volts times your amps to get your end power, which would be kilowatts or watts. Um, so to the right of the slide right here, um, EGSA, America Green Zone Alliance, provided us with this. Um, and basically, it's just showing that at different voltages, you can deliver the same amount of power. Um, with lower voltage, there is some advantages. Um, the advantage of that is um, much less risk for electrical shock below 55 volts DC. So with our mowers, you know, if for some reason you were to touch a live wire, it wouldn't really hurt you. Um, it'd be more of a, like a tickle where, you know, if you were working on a mower that was say 82 volts or something like that, you would feel it a lot more. Um, higher voltage advantage. Um, with a higher voltage, you can get away with a smaller diameter wire. Um, you do save about two pounds per mower. And marketing departments really like to play with those high voltage numbers because a lot of people aren't educated that voltage is only half the power equation. And then also your efficiency. So at either voltage, you can be the exact same um, efficiency. Um, it just depends on how your motors are wound for that specific voltage. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, battery capacity, which is your runtime. So this is one thing that you're really going to want to look at when you're comparing commercial electric mowers. Um, you may find a mower out there that might be a little cheaper, but you really need to see how many kilowatt hours the battery is that is in that mower, um, especially if the battery cannot be changed out throughout the day. Um, so we, you know, our, some there is a mower out there that they have a 16 kilowatt hour battery. Um, in a 60 inch zero turn mower that is not exchangeable. And with our mower comparable model, we have a 22 kilowatt hour battery. And you know, your kilowatt hour is kind of like your gas tank. So if you have a smaller gas tank, you're gonna have to fill it more often throughout the day. Um, so with electric, you'd have to charge it more often. So unfortunately, if you have a smaller battery, it's just not gonna get you the runtime that you need to get through a full day of mowing without having to stop and recharge. So the big thing is, is always check your kilowatt hour of the battery um, to confirm that, you know, you are buying something that's physically going to get be able to get you through a full day of mowing because we have seen, you know, where some people buy mowers and it's just, it just doesn't give you the six to seven hours of runtime that you truly need as a commercial operator to get through a full day of work. Uh, next slide, please. Efficiency. So like I said earlier, we use aerospace aluminum along with steel to make our mowers as light as possible, but still as strong as possible. So with this, I'm just kind of showing that, you know, if you had a wagon that was empty, it might take 500 watts of power versus a wagon that had a kit in it. It might take more power, like 750 watts. So one big thing to keep in mind is, for example, we were at the GIE Expo last week, and we had a lot of gas mower brands that are bringing mowers there and they're literally just taking a gas mower frame and they're just mounting batteries and, and components to it. The problem is it's making it extremely heavy and very inefficient. Um, so just keep in mind that Mean Green, what we do is we built the mower around the electric, you know, the battery to make it as light as possible, but yet still um, as efficient as possible. So you're always gonna wanna you know, compare mower weights to you know, make sure that you know, you're, you're being as efficient as possible because it's gonna take more power to move something that is more heavier. Next slide, please. Value. So on our website, we have a simple savings calculator that you can go on and you can actually type in how much the gas mower costs, how much the electric mower costs, and all of your other information like your fuel price and your kilowatt hour price. Um, this is going to help you determine how much money you can save by using an electric mower versus a gas mower. Um, because the electric mower up front is going to be more expensive, but as you use it, you're saving anywhere from like six to $7 per operational hour. So your return on investment, you typically hit depending on how, how 
you know, how many hours a year you put on your mowers, typically in the first year and a half to two years. Um, so def definitely go on our website, check out this, cal this cost savings calculator and really see, you know, what you could save over the you know, next couple of years of using uh, an electric mower instead of your typical uh, diesel. Uh, next slide, please. Safety. Um, so safety, you're really going to want to see what kind of safety standards um, the other companies are using. Um, mean Green, we, all, we do comply with the ANSI standards, which is pretty much um, ANSI is followed by all gas mowers out there. Um, so Mean Green does comply with all of the ANSI standards. Uh, the CE. Um, so in order to sell over in Europe, we are CE certified. So Mean Green has received that certification, which is just another certification that mower brands can get in order to sell in certain areas and just be that much better. Um, we also have HAV, WBV, European hand and arm vibration. We've received that certificate. Um, battery safety. Um, so our batteries are UN 38.3 certified. Um, so that's just a bunch of testing where they do like high altitude testing, thermal testing, drop testing. They, they take a sphere and shoot it to the side of the battery. Um, so we do have a lot of, um, we've gone through a lot of testing with our batteries and we have passed and received the certificates associated, associated with that specific test. And then UL and other standards. Um, so Mean Green does comply with UL and other standards that are out there. Uh, we're not UL certified, uh, but we do comply with all of the, all of the UL standards that are, that are put in place. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so right now, Mean Green has four different models. Uh, we are going to be coming out with a fifth. Uh, the fifth one's going to be a prosumer unit, though, so it's going to be more designed for someone who's cutting up to about five acres of charge. Um, but with our models, the, our biggest model is a 74-inch cut. It's a flat five-blade unit, and it can run eight hours on a charge. That is our Evo, which is on the left side of the screen. Uh, the next model is the Rival. The Rival is a three-blade unit. It can run up to seven hours on a charge and it's offered in a 52 or 60 inch deck. And the Vanquish is our stand on three blade unit uh, that can run seven hours on a charge. Um, and it's also offered in a 52 or 60 inch deck. Uh, with the Evo, you can only get it in the rear discharge deck, uh, but with the Rival and Vanquish, you can get it in either a rear discharge mulch deck or a side discharge deck. So we have, do have a couple of different deck options, uh, depending on what's gonna work best for your application. And then over on the right, we have our WBX 33 HD model, which is a 33 inch dual blade walk behind. Um, and uh, it's great for getting in and out of gates or any, any smaller areas. Next slide, please. So our evolution series models are our Evo, Vanquish, and Arrival. And the features, these are some of the features that those models share uh, between the three mowers. Uh, so the first feature is our impulse drive system. So with our drives, we actually build the drive within the wheel. Um, so the motor is built into the wheel. Um, and if you look over at our picture where it shows a 20 degree slope rating, the battery is down in between the wheels. So our battery, the bulk of our weight is built in between the wheels for a very low center of gravity. And Mean Green actually holds a patent for where we place that battery in between those wheels. So because of what we do and how we've designed where the battery pack sits, we're able to have stability on slopes up to 20 degrees. Uh, we, act, we also uh, build our mowers with a Y front end to where you can fit you know, more mowers on a trailer than if it was just a straight flat front end. Uh, we do have a touchscreen interactive touchscreen display. Uh, within that display, you can, you can actually do a bunch of different um, things on it. You can see your battery capacity. You can set your deck height. Uh, you can turn your blades on high or low, um, turn your drives on high and low. And then there's also an admin section to where a supervisor could go in and make the deck to where it can't go under say three inches, or they can go in and make it to where the, the mower can only go so fast. Um, so there is an admin section that you can go in and you can lock out specific um, features uh, so that you know someone doesn't go out and say scalp someone's entire yard, because uh, that would be a bad thing. 
we have the Smart Deck Rapid Height Lift System. So this this uh, deck this deck lift system will lift the deck uh, really fast. So it's kind of like having a, a foot pedal uh, that you see a lot on gas machines to be able if you come up to something and you need to go over it, you would you know hit the pedal, go over it, and the deck would come back down. With ours, it's electronic, um, so you press the button and there's really no force with your foot. It's going to raise it up very quickly. You hit the other side of the button, it's gonna lower it back down very quickly to that preset height that you set on your display. Um, so that is a very cool feature that a lot of people like. Um, our Evolution Series Evo and Rival come with a comfort suspension seat. Um, so you can adjust it to the weight of the operator um, so that it's just the best for, for you know, your specific weight. And then our mowers do come with the standard front wheels. Um, so it's an airless tire made by Michelin uh, that you don't have to worry about any kind of flat. So like if you go through thorns um, or, you know, get a nail in your tire. Next slide, please. Uh, these right here are the four most popular options, accessories that we have for our units. Um, the first one is going to be the electric blower. So the blower can mount to the front of the Evolution Series models, the Rival Vanquish Evo. Uh, mean Green actually does hold, hold a patent for this. Um, so we're the only manufacturer that can put an electric blower on the front of a mower. Um, the blower does have two speeds up to 550 CFM. It does have a swivel nozzle that goes left to right and it's quiet at about 65 to 70 decibels. Uh, the second most popular option is gonna be our SAM, which is our solar assisted mower canopy. Um, so it's gonna trickle charge the battery while mowing. It adds approximately 20 minutes of runtime on a nice sunny day, and it could potentially qualify you for a federal solar tax credit. Um, our road warning light kit is also a very popular option. So this is a full road light kit um, that includes hazards, hazard lights, headlights, taillights, turn signals, flashing beacons, and does have a horn. And then we also have a jack that'll mount to the front of the mower to where you can raise the mower up about 14 inches to get to the deck to be able to service it uh, easy. Um, out, out and about. Next slide, please. As far as charging goes, um, this right here shows our charge times. Um, our standard charger that comes with our Rival and Vanquish is going to charge the mower in about 13 hours. It's a 220 volt charger and you need about 7.6 amps from your outlet. Um, the Evo is going to come with a Different charger that's also 220 volt and it's going to require about 11 amps from an outlet and it's going to take about 14 hours to charge that Evo. Um, now, if you did want to charge the mower even faster, um, which honestly we really never sell just because, you know, overnight charge is plenty. Um, we do have charge ports on the front and back of the mower. So you technically could basically cut your time in half by using two chargers instead of one. Um, so, you know, you could get that charge time down to about four and a half hours on the rival if you wanted to. Um, but like I said, it's just an overnight charge with the standard charger. So it seems to work out very well um, for the people that we sold to. Next slide, please. All right. And that's pretty much the end of my presentation. Um, one thing to mention is we are on the source well contract. Um, so, if, you know, if you're a municipality that are a member of Sourcewell. We are on the Sourcewell contract. Uh, we are USA engineered and built. Uh, for more information, go to meangreenproducts.com. And uh, I appreciate you letting us come on here and present during this webinar. Thank you so much, Tyler. Really appreciate it. Um, so now we're going to hear from Kendall Smith from Gravely. Kendall, do you want to unmute? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Um, thank you for the opportunity to talk a little bit about the Gravely ProTurn EV60 that we have uh, in the marketplace right now. Oh, Kendall, we, oh, we lost you for a second there. Oh. Hey, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So we'll talk about the batteries, we'll talk about the wheel motors, the spindle motors, some of the things that make us a little bit different versus uh, the competitors or your options out there and a real brief summary. So you can go to the head of the next slide, please. Um, I guess before I start that, uh, 
maybe I'm not sure if everybody knows about Gravely. We are over 100 years old. We are a commercial lawnmower manufacturer. That's what we do. Um, we've been doing it for a long time, well over 100 years. We're part of the Aaron's Co. Company, which is uh, fifth generation, family owned and run, based out of Brilliant, Wisconsin. That's where all the manufacturing, it says all the, manuf uh, the engineering takes place as well. So we are a USA based company um, that has been in business for well over 100 years with the Gravely brand. So, um, first of all, I want to say thanks to, uh, to Tyler. I think he did a really nice job of explain, explaining some of those things that um, need to be considered in making a transition from a gas or a diesel mower to electric. And the batteries are one of the core areas of it. So we've done things a little bit differently than uh, some, of, some of the other manufacturers in the fact that we have a removable battery system. So rather than a single battery that's fixed into the unit, these are swappable. What this does is gives you the opportunity to run all day long. So it's not uh, a five hour, eight hour, it can be a continuous operating product. And we built this on our commercial platform of lawnmowers. So it's like I said, one of the things that we know how to do is we know how to cut grass. We've been doing it for a very long time. So we we now have the technology and we, we're grateful for the, the, the advances that have been made so that we can now make this available in a battery operated system. So we do have a patent pending system that draws efficiently from all four of the batteries. So you can put these in at different levels of charge and they will auto level themselves. Um, it does have the ability to operate on as few as two batteries. So if you had an extra spare spare set of batteries, you could run off of two that basically will keep you running uh, for the balance of that day. You can go ahead and to the next slide, please. So the, uh, we talked about the quick swap system this is, uh, it gives you the ability to have a true all day cutting experience. Each one of these batteries weighs about 50 pounds. Uh, so they're easily just a little bit more than a full tank of a uh, five gallon can of fuel. So it's uh, very easy to take in and out, easy to manage that. Uh, we have offboard charging, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, so when we talk about the ease of use, having this extra set of batteries, it, it is it's the industry's first true quick swap system. So you can go ahead and go to the next slide, please. So charging is an important piece of it. it obviously, you have a limited capacity from batteries overall. So being able to get that back recharged and up run and running is an important part of it. So our, our batteries charge uh, all four of those from a 0% of 0% state of charge up to a fully charged is uh, is uh, 12 hours and that can go off of 110 volt or off of a 220 volt either way it's not going to change your charging times but it does change the amperage draw but you can this charger is capable of either the 110 or the 220 volt we also have a wide charger that that will that will double the speed of that charge time so you can get that down to uh six hours for a full charge from a zero state of charge up to full so like I said, it will also operate off of two batteries. So you have an opportunity to put two batteries in there with that quick charger. And now you're talking in, in just a couple hours, you have full capacity on those two batteries that continues to keep that machine running and going. No break-in period or conditioning of the process. Um, it does have the capability of 110 volt or the 220 volt system. And we also have an off-board charging system available that has the capability of charging the four batteries at the, at the same time. So go ahead and go to the next slide. Wheel motors. Um, like I said, we're a commercial lawnmower manufacturer. We've been doing this for a very, very long time. And that was one of the most important things that we could do is make sure that this cuts like a, a commercial lawnmower. And it is, it is a commercial mower and that's what you're looking for is the quality of cut. And that's what we've been able to deliver. The next thing to it is, does it feel like a gas mower? Does it feel like what you're used to using? We spent a lot of time and um, my, my thought, and I have a lot of people that would su support this, is that the feel of this is more like gas than any other electric mower in the marketplace. Uh, we spent, like I said, a lot of time making sure that the feel is 
similar to what we offer and provide from our gasoline mowers. The other benefit is the uh, the efficiency and, and efficiency the the Tyler talked about is absolutely critical. He's he's right, um, and we we've, we've doubled the size of the windings and the magnets and the motors to help increase that efficiency efficiency, and that allows us to take very very little draw and the actual moving or the wheel motors are are a small percentage of the draw on this versus the spindle motors. So you have uh, the co smooth commercial feel that you that you have in a commercial lawnmower you can go ahead into the next slide please uh, the spindle motors uh, we have again increased the size of the windings increased the, the capacity of the magnets that is what helps gain the, the efficiency and that will will allow you to continue that runtime our runtime is going to be with the standard batteries obviously depends on the conditions there's are you using a standard blade or using a high efficiency blade a lift blade a mulch blade what kind of grass are you cutting are you cutting it long are you cutting it short so there's a variety of factors that go into the runtime there um, but it's going to range between four to we have some users getting six hours out of that standard six the the four battery packs without having to change to a to a second set set I'm not going to guarantee that everyone's going to get six hours out of it, but that's some of the experience that we've had from from our users. Probably closer in that four to five hour range is more typical of what you're seeing in in normal conditions. So the spindle motors, um, because the efficiency we have there, we also have built in a slip clutch so that if you do engage or, or hit a stationary object, the blade is going to stop. It's not going to damage the motor. Uh, one of the other things that we've done in those spindle motors is we made, we made those serviceable. So they are, you have the ability to rebuild those just like you would with your standard commercial mower as well. Um, you can go to the, uh, the next slide, please. Low decibels. Um, while we do believe in the clean, getting the clean air, that's only one aspect of using commercial mowers. The, the noise is also one of the primary factors and primary drivers for some of the con consumers for this product. So if you hit the next the tab, it will give you a, a reading. At our, at our standard uh, high efficiency blade, you're gonna be running around 84 decibels. With the high lift blade, you're gonna be around 88 decibels. To put that in comparison, a standard, standard mower, gas mower is gonna run a little bit over 105 decibels. So you're, dramatically reducing the amount of, of noise that is being produced when you're doing the cutting. Now, the difference as well is in the frequency of that noise. So while you still have that 80 to 84 to 88 decibel level, the frequency is such that if you get between 50 to 75 feet away, you hardly hear the mower at all. Now, the benefit there is that also gives you, it opens up more opportunities for cutting earlier in the morning. Um, also, where school districts are concerned, anywhere where noise is an issue, hospitals, some resorts also are requiring that the noise, noise ordinance considerations. So the, the decibels is another consideration as you take a look at switching your, your fleets out to electric. A couple other pieces that I don't have slides for, but I do want to address is the uh, the X-Factor 3 deck that we have, it's all of our decks on our mowers right now from the electrics are a seven gauge steel deck with the 5 8 inch reinforcement rim around the front of that. Again, it's a commercial platform, it's a commercial mower, you should expect nothing less. Um, the other benefit on the X-Factor 3 deck is that we've redesigned the baffles. So this is also one of those things that helps not only with the efficiency of the motors, but for the quality of cut. In it, optimizes that airflow so you get better grass standing up, gets you a much cleaner cut on that versus uh, some of the other pieces in or other equipment in the marketplace. Um, if you can go to that next slide, please. So there we go, there's the decibels on that. So with the with X-Factor 3 deck, we also, and then on the, the display screen, rather than going with the touch screen, we have a simple toggle. It makes it easier to go back and forth between the different screens. Uh, we've got people who are wearing gloves who may or may not have access to to uh, have touch activated on that screen. So we've gone that way with our our piece of it. Onboard diagnostics as well. Um, and then, uh, like I said, this is built on our commercial grade platform. And uh, 
with the size of the motors and the windings, we get the efficiency that that is that the users are expecting out of this. You can go to the next slide there. Our our warranty, we have a just like all of our other high our uh, commercial products, it's a five year warranty or fifteen hundred hour warranty, no limit on the first two years. We've got uh, a three year warranty on the battery. So this is the way it is. On uh, we've got three models, or I'm sorry three sizes of decks available. This year we'll have a 48, a 52 to accompany our existing 60 inch decks, all available on both side discharge as well as rear discharge available. Um, and we also are on the source well contract. So if you have any concerns with that, we have uh, that available as well. Any other questions? That's great. Thank you so much, Kendall. We'll leave the questions till the end. Oh do a mass Q&A at the very end. Um, so now we will hear from Billy Ottoman at Scythe Robotics and they're based in Longmont. Billy, Excellent. can you unmute yourself? Yeah, you got it. Excellent, thank you so much. Uh, and thanks to everyone for the, the time and opportunity here today. Um, as just introduced, my name is Billy Ottoman. I'm from Scythe Robotics and we are a startup lawn mowing manufacturing company based out of Longmont, Colorado. So when we had come across Clear and heard about their mission and uh, what, what we're doing here, we thought this would be a great opportunity to showcase a little bit of the homegrown innovation that's going on in um, kind of in this space as it relates to electric power um, and some of the work that we're doing here in Colorado with the opportunity to, to make this transition that we've been talking about here. So Zach, can you flip to the next slide? This is just a little bit about us. We are based in Boulder County, Colorado, and our mission is really aligned with that of CLEAR, and I, I think many of you as well. Um, we are pioneering the most advanced sustainable autonomous technology to better care for our outdoor spaces while also growing the businesses that maintain them. So Scythe Robotics was built uh, with the intention of creating autonomous mowers, but we also have a strong lens to the sustainable element of electric power. Um, and that is core to what we're trying to do. You know, put more simply, what we're trying to do at Scythe is build and use technology to better care for the environment. So if you flip to the next slide here, how we're doing that and where we're starting is with commercial landscaping. Uh, you know, the green industry and commercial landscaping is at the front of open space management and taking care of the outdoor spaces that we in Colorado especially love so much. Um, and so we're creating solutions that can help take care of those spaces and scale our ability to manage these spaces in a more environmentally friendly way. So our machine that we're building Scythe M.52 is a 52 inch commercial grade mower that's fully autonomous as well as fully electric. Um, it's able to use different cameras and onboard sensing systems to navigate the environment of a property on its own, while your crew is able to do other higher value work like edging, trimming, and things along those lines. If you flip to the next slide, you'll see a little bit about what it is that what it is that we're doing. Um, Scythe has been in development for the last three years in Longmont, um, uh, the Longmont area, Boulder County area. We've been developing this mower. Uh, we just kind of came out of stealth mode in June and then introduced ourselves to the industry at a couple conferences over the last few months, including GIE, which Tyler just mentioned, which was just last week. We're still recovering a little bit from that event. But what we have here um, on, this, on this image, you can see kind of the, the robot in action. Again, it's a 52-inch rear discharge commercial mower. And what you do when you get to a property you drive the perimeter of the property manually, you switch it into self-driving mode, and then it uses eight HDR cameras and different sens uh, sensors on the, on, the, on the robot to kind of navigate the environment. It's able to tell the difference between different obstacles it encounters. It will go around a tree or a pole, but it'll stop for a human, for example. Once that human or animal is out of the way, it'll start back up again and continue the job to keep things moving without the crewman having to go over and get it going again. Um, and then if it comes into contact or meets an obstacle that it doesn't know or doesn't know what to do, it'll notify the crewman that's nearby and the crewman could go either remove that branch or bucket or mark that area as a no-mow zone if there's something there that the mower shouldn't go back to through the course of the day. 
the crew is then freed up to take care of some other higher value work that can help grow the business and make them more productive. Edging, trimming, cleanup, engaging with uh, property owners, things along those lines, all is happening while the monotonous work of, uh, the, mo of the mowing is getting done. Um, and most relevant to the conversation here today, it charges overnight, again, on, on a standard 110, 120 volt, uh, and you just pick it up and do it all again tomorrow. So I'll talk a little bit more about the electric, uh, the electric power here before we do, if you flip to the next slide again, Zach. This is kind of the spec overview of the machine that, that we've built, um, really taking the self-driving technology and cutting edge robotics and applying that to commercial grade equipment. So kind of, uh, you know, bringing these two things together, innovative technology, along with durable commercial grade equipment to create a solution that helps you get more done and helps you get more done with the crews that you already have. So here's some of the specs here. There's a lot more information on M.52 on our website. But as it relates to power, which I think is the most important and relevant part of the conversation here today, on the next slide, I'll talk about a few of the different pieces that we are focusing on as we try to make energy, um, electric energy and electric power more feasible for contractors and landscapers. So Zach, if you flip to that next slide. There's a lot of benefits that the team has already mentioned here today about electric power, so it's much more environmentally friendly than, than gas-powered solutions. The, the numbers vary. Some of the, the stats that we, we've looked at show that one hour of running a gas-powered mower is equivalent to driving a car 300 miles in terms of pollution output. So switching to electric power is, uh, is a lot more sustainable and a lot better for the environment. Um, it's significantly quieter, like Kendall just mentioned. Our machines as well are about 20 decibels quieter than their, their gas-powered counterparts. And they're much less expensive to run and maintain. So gas prices are continuing to increase. Right now, per you know, for a full day of mowing, gas-powered mowers cost about six times more than electric-powered mowers when you do the calculations to see what your energy costs for the day are. Electric power mowers, which the team mentioned as well, also require much less maintenance. On our machine, there's only 20 moving parts compared to about 300 on an electric, on a, on a gas powered machine. So you can kind of, you have no pulleys or parts, no oil changes, no fluids that need to be swapped out. They're much easier to maintain. So your maintenance costs go down as well. All of that to say some of the things that we're doing to help advance the adoption of electric mowers in the market and make this a more feasible option, um, all day battery. So something that both Kendall and Tyler had mentioned, this is what we are driving towards. Uh, we've got, again, currently we've got an all day mow between six and eight hours, depending on many of the different variables that Kendall had mentioned, how thick the grass is, what you're cutting it at, that type of thing. So right now we're at about six to eight hours of mow time. And then in our next generation product, uh, we'll be about 20 to 25% higher than that, which we're excited just to continue to see as battery technology increases and advances, what that means for mow time throughout the day. Charges overnight, similarly to uh, to the other options on a 120, uh, 110, or one sorry, 110 charge faster on a 220 volt if you've got it, plugs right in to whatever system that you've already got in place. We also have an energy optimized design. Um, things that we're focusing on are really trying to optimize how much energy is being used. When it comes to gas powered machines, little has been done to optimize energy output, um, especially when it comes to um, just the overall weight of the machine, like Tyler had mentioned, but also thinking about things like um, blade design and deck design, the aerodynamics of the machine itself. How can we create a, a more optimized solution here to maximize the energy we can get while still delivering that high quality cut? And then lastly, one of the things that we're doing as, as we launch, uh, we just launched reservations for our machine um, within the last couple of weeks. And one of the things we're doing to start is a pay as you mow pricing model. So we're not selling the machine outright just yet. Um, we're doing instead a pay as you mow pricing model where you will pay by acre mowed. So depending on the acreage that's used by the machine, uh, you'll be charged depending on the, the variables of the property, the complexity of the property, open fields versus, you know, 
high-end HOA residential would be very different prices. But what we're trying to do with a pay-as-you-mow pricing model is reduce that overall upfront cost. So that way, this type of technology can be more accessible and electric power can be more accessible to landscapers of all sizes. So while um, it might not be as relevant for the Colorado Clean Diesel Program to start, in the future, we hope to see a greater adoption of electric mowers through a pricing model like this. Um, and then potentially other programs that can help subsidize the cost of mowing with electric equipment. And then on the next slide, just a final slide, um, you can get more information about Scythe and what we're up to on our website, getscythe.com. We're taking reservations for the mowers, like I had mentioned, and ramping up production. Production for 2022 is already accounted for, so we're looking at fulfilling orders for uh, 2023 and beyond. We are based in Longmont, so we've got some uh, demos happening. If you're uh, local to the area here, we'll have some road shows and product mower demos going on over the course of likely the spring as we move into winter seasons here, but you can get in contact with us on the website, getscythe.com, or I am billy at scytherobotics.com as well, if you would like to reach out over email. So thank you. Thank you so much, Billy, and to all of the presenters. Anytime I hear about new electric technology, I just think, wow, it's really a no-brainer to switch. <laughs> so I hope that I hope that other that the attendees on this webinar um, feel the same way. Um, so I'd also like to introduce uh, Amy Bateman, a, C a Siebert branch manager whose fleet is currently using the Gravely Electric mowers, and Steve Pierce, he's the VP of operations at Siebert, and they're available here because they're actually using the Gravely mowers right now in their landscaping operations. So if any attendees have questions um, for people who are currently using the technology, um, they're available to answer some questions. Um, and actually, if, if Amy or Steve, if you don't mind, you could um, just quickly, you know, we only have eight minutes left, but um, quickly talk about what inspired you to make the change to electric and, and what the future looks like for Seabert and, and, and your adoption. Um, yeah, I'll take this one. <laughs> um, what inspired us overall is that we've We've always had, you know, our, the ownership of our company is, is very much into the innovation side of, of, of the business as a whole. And, and we've been using handheld battery powered equipment and we've designed solar trailers to power them, to repower them for many, many years. And as a matter of fact, I think, um, Amy, you're almost 100% battery powered handheld equipment in your branch, which is our largest branch. Um, so the opportunities that have come about with the battery powered mowers and, and we're using Gravely in which we're very happy with um, the, the product that they've put out, but ultimately going into just like the last presentation is looking at that robotic side of it, eventually seeing that come down, come to life. Um, and just being on the sustainable side of it. We do believe as a company that, um, you know, being green really has to start from the inside out, not just providing, you know, landscapes that are sustainable. We believe that we should be green from the inside out. That's awesome. And Amy, what have your operators said about using the Gravely machine? Um, well, basically, so most of our crews, whenever we introduce some sort of new piece of equipment with them, there's a bit of resistance that happens because it's change. Yeah. Um, so we predicted that we would have a lot of resistance with these new machines and actually Gravely and Mark and his team were really great in helping us implement these new machines. They gave us a training day. We brought the guys that, that have ran them for the entire year out. They created an obstacle course for them, taught them how to, you know, change the blades, let them run them, really got them comfortable. And I think that that helped get them excited on top of the fact that right away, they, the first words out of their mouths were, they're so quiet. <laughs> My ears don't hurt. And we have had several of the guys that use them at the end of the day have said to us, we go home and our ears don't hurt. Even though they're wearing earplugs, with the other machines, it's still making a difference. Yeah. 
And the vibration too, I, um, the vibration is a little bit less, isn't it? I feel yeah. like, and maybe some of the other guys can speak to that as well. Yeah, it's a lot, it is a lot less. And in that, you know, that has a lot of different factors and then how, how you get to know the mower and how you treat that mower in the future, because the tolerances are different and in a gas powered mower, you, the, with belts and pulleys and all that, they, they, they drowned everything out, yeah. what there could be an issue. Yeah. Um, that is actually going to happen at some point in time, but with the with the the battery powered mowers, um, there's no because there's no belts. Yeah. Thanks, um, Tyler. If you could unmute, there was a question during your presentation about whether you can add a battery at purchase for the Mean Green mowers. So you cannot. So with our mowers, we design the battery packs to get people through a full day of mowing. Yeah. Um, so in our Vanquish and Rival, we have a 22 kilowatt hour battery pack that we offer, which is going to give you a true seven hour runtime. Mm -hmm. Yes, you could get a little more than that if you're in the summer mowing. Uh, but, you know, you're going to see at least, you know, six and a half, seven hours, uh, you know, through your spring thick, wet um, grass. Um, and then with our Evo, we have a 35 kilowatt hour battery. Um, so, you know, our equivalent is like, you know, having, so Gravely, they've has a 16 kilowatts on board, plus you'd have to add a couple extra batteries to get to where we're at. Um, so, you know, we're, we're basically just, we have on board what you need instead of having to swap it throughout the day. It's yeah. kind of how we've designed our packs instead of the quick swap packs. Yeah. So we, we yeah. tried the we tried the quick swap packs in the past um, when we first started up and it seemed that people just didn't, wanted to just, you know, be able to mow and, and not have to worry about swapping packs or, you know, having packs potentially get stolen that are sitting in a trailer. Um, so that's why we went with that version of just having the capacity on board. Great. Yeah, I feel like with the various um, OEMs that we have on this webinar today, there are um, enough differences to make them unique and, um, and, and potentially work for different types of customers. And I really like that because not every person has exactly the same needs in their mower or um, in their fleet. Um, and so I also wanted to just quickly address what Billy talked about with the um, pay-as-you-mow pricing scheme that Scythe has developed, which I think is a really cool way to encourage people to try this without a, a huge initial upfront cost. Um, because what we've, when we've talked to people, some of the, the biggest barriers to adoption is just people being nervous about spending all that money up front um, and not knowing if they're going to love it. So I really like that. But it does disqualify it from the, the CCDP um, funding. But that's not to say that that won't change in the future. And when people are convinced of the technology and they wanna buy them outright, then that's, um, then they gotta come to us and help, let us help them pay for it. <laughs> um, do any other attendees have any questions? Um, you're, you're welcome to unmute yourself or type it into the, the question and answer. We just have a couple of minutes left. I don't wanna go over time because I know everybody is super busy. Um, but if there's anything, um, any other questions? I, um, when I started looking into the electric mowers, I found a passion in me for mowers that I didn't realize I had. <laughs> um, we, our office is um, kind of situated, it's, a, it's an old elementary school. And so there's a lot of grass around us. And in the summers we keep the doors open and currently Carbondale is using, um, gas and, and um, diesel powered mowers and blowers and everything. And, and that's, that's going to be changing in the next year or two. But, um, you know, we can't, we can't leave our doors open because it gets so loud and the fumes just waft into the, our office. Um, so it's really, it, I mean, I, and I think everybody's had that experience with, with mowers at some point in their local park or at their school or um, in their office building. They're loud and they're stinky and it's, Time to change, <laughs> seems, seems like a no-brainer to me, like I said. Um, all right, so I'm not seeing any other questions. I just wanna thank you all so much for participating, for spending an hour of your morning with us and um, to both um, presenters and attendees. 
we have recorded this and we will be sending it out to everyone who registered for it and also to the presenters so they, they can use it as well. Um, and it'll also be on our website, CoCleanDiesel.com. Dot org, um, So you guys can pass it along and you can send people there if you need to, to watch it or to also review the slides. We'll send out the slide deck as well. Um, so again, just thank you so much for your time today. And um, hopefully it will inspire some people to, um, to switch to electric. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. Have a great day and appreciate your time again. Bye. Thank you. Bye.